Hey everybody, Mark Agnese here in the back room at Norman's Rare Guitars. And once again, it's time for Guitar of the Day. Everybody get to know Angered Cheese out there. I think uh, everybody seemed to enjoy the Dean yesterday. Maybe I should read what you guys write more often, I don't know. <laughs> I just like to bust out a little... Some metal shredding from my youth. No. That used to be all I did. You know. And then I just wasn't angry with my dad anymore and grew out of it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was never angry with my dad. I, I just liked screaming as a kid, you know? And shredding. It was a different era. Uh, let's see, it's Flat Top Friday. Woohoo! This guitar is like water. It's like air. It's like... It's like something you just have to have. Uh, it, it's And it's a great example, too. This is... I've been looking forward to getting one of these because we just haven't had a really clean one. But for Flat Top Friday this week, I thought, we're going classic. Why don't you guys come back check this out. It's from 1957. This is just an original Gibson J45. Ooh. Really clean one, too. If it were up to me, the Gibson J45 <clears throat> should just be like a, a standard government-issued thing. Like, every household in America should be given a J45 and a Les Paul Jr. Uh, it, you know, they should be everywhere. <laughs> if it was up to me. If I were your president, everyone would get a J45 and a junior. These things are called the workhorse for a reason. Uh, so we did that banner last week. We were talking, you know, 42 is the first year of the J45. That's when they kind of phase out the J35, J55, and bring in the 45 and the Southern Jumbo. Um, so we have the slope shoulder body which is, you know, classic on these. They did go to a square shoulder in like the 70s. We don't like those ones as much. Uh, slope shoulder, tobacco sunburst finish. What's the difference between a J45 and a J50? Nothing, except the color. J50s are natural. J45's got the sunburst top. It's the only difference between those two guitars. They made them different models. Uh, and then like we did the Southern Jumbo last week. Southern Jumbo, country and western, same guitar. Country and western's natural. Southern Jumbo is sunburst. Um, they're just so not fancy. They're not going to win like a bling contest. They're not very Grand old Opry looking like a you know Pearl Top Martin or something. Really, really simple. Sitka spruce top. We got mahogany back and sides. We got a mahogany neck. Unbound rosewood fingerboard. Simple dot inlays. Plastic button tuners. But God, these things have been on more records than anything. That's why they call it the workhorse, man. This is like one of those guitars, you, you just buy it and you'll have it for your whole entire life and you'll use it on everything. You'll hear these guitars on all the country records, you'll hear old blues records, these guys, you'll hear them on pop records still currently. It's just, it's the right size, it's the right woods. They always track great. They don't get overly boomy, although some of them can be real cannons. When they record, they don't record super boomy where you gotta take a lot of EQs out of these things. Um, this is a you know, later part of the 50s. You're still gonna see scallop bracing on these up until about 55, I think is the last year on the scallop, or the first year of the non-scallop, 54 is the last. You'll also notice they normally, the uh, earlier ones will have that teardrop pick guard. Once we go to the full brace, we kind of switch to this bigger uh, sized pick guard. And then once we get into 58, 59 is when they start giving you the option of the adjustable saddle bridge. They did them both ways with the fixed saddle or, or the adjustable saddle. And then once we get uh, to 1960, the whole guitar just becomes the J4580J for that adjustable bridge with the, you know, the two screws where you can raise and lower the saddle. But this is Prime Era. There's really nothing to talk about this guitar other than how freaking clean it is, man. Really nice condition. It's never drilled for a second strap button. Got the original uh, croc case. Anytime you see a croc case that has survived this many years and is in that good a condition, you know what's inside has been well cared for too. Um, yeah, I love them. Everyone should have one of these things who's a serious guitar player. J45 is like, it's like eating breakfast, man. You just gotta have one. Uh, let's go out to the couch. We'll hit it with the fingers. We'll strum it with a pick. We'll see why this thing is uh, one of the most revered models of all times. All right, we're out front. We have the 1957 Gibson J45. Original sunburst finish. Let's put it through the paces here. We'll start with the fingers. We'll move to the pick in a little bit here.
That's enough of that. Let's uh, switch to a flat pick here. Excuse me one second. Let's hit this thing a little bit harder, see how it responds with a little more on the right hand here. like a bell even after all these years. This one's from 1957. Original J45. Really, really clean one too. Original sunburst finish. It's got the bigger pick guard from that era. Unbound neck, simple dot inlays. Original soft croc case comes with it as well, which is also in excellent, excellent condition. Hey, happy Flat Top Friday, man. That means we only got one more of these to do this week, Jen. Yes. Cannot wait. Happy Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Have fun tonight. Be uh, be safe. If you can't be safe, be reckless. Call an Uber. It's like, <laughs> it's 2000, 2017, 17. man. There's ways around not drinking and driving these days. So uh, be safe out there. Have one for me. I'll have one for you. I promise. See you guys tomorrow. One final guitar of the day of the week. Follow me on Instagram at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at Norman's Rare Guitars. Check these things out online at normansrareguitars.com. Till we meet again. Peace.